I'm Dr. Chaos, and welcome back to Hitman. This time we are doing Dark Knight, which is like Blend, I'm pretty sure, with Death and the Family. I'm pretty sure that this mission is loosely based upon on some, like it has taken some inspiration from the movie Knives Out, so yeah. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, and you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the Constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Didn't Lucas get all the training as well? Why does he do all this? Naturally, my is starting to act. My mouse is starting to act up again. So just yeah, smuggled item. Can't smuggle anything in. Sadly, can only start on the main road. Hmm. What would those do? Oops. Sorry. Let's just reset the items. And the normal suit. Let us begin. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Whitmer, private investigator. 
I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right there. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlyle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take... Okay. Yeah, this is the murder mystery um, thing. That's the one I do kind of want to do. Thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Please do. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and and I dare say I don't like it at all. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. So I just need to check. That's a bit excessive, I think. Considering the fact that I spotted no less than two routes to get inside the house unseen. We know what we're doing, sir. Don't worry about that. I should have just dropped that on his head. Oh uh, look, I route into the house unseen. Wait for. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. In time to be a murder, miss. To do this murder mystery. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them. If they seem looking good, looking good. Unusual situation. 
I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body? 47. Yeah, that looks like poison. Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. So the whiskey was poisoned, it seems. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. When I try to just push him off the balcony, he had the best. Hmm. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm. A photocopy of the floor plan. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. You've likely not exhausted the room for clues, 47. Interesting, interesting. Did Zachary live here anyway, or was he just staying here because that could... Oh, so of some indication. because I do not want anyone to come in and go, ah, wait, what's that dude doing there? Okay, 
guess I'll need to find a crowbar and come back here. What is our bot a bar totally doing? Aaron Ford Jr. calling from Morgan Yates and... Guess they're trying to... Um... Fix the... Stealing of the assets by... Constant... I assume that the final... Bit of evidence would actually be the suicide note now I think about it. So where is it? There. Probably should have noticed this earlier to be honest. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Hey, I'm the one who can do this. Greetings, sir. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive Hello, until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So, Zachary, Gregory, Edward, Rebecca, Emma, Patrick, and then I already talked to him. So, Zachary's room has been done. Now just Emma's, Rebecca's, Mr. Phonesby, and then so how does one yeah. solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Which... That door leads to Emma and... Gregory's room. Hmm... Not suspicious at all. Let me just find another way into the room.
I guess there's footprints or something at some point. Okay, so Bulldog Kane. Yes, that makes a clunking sound when hitting the floor. Interesting. Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from M... ...his mother, stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. So Emma and does have this, a motive. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. Lot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Hmm. I should get back to you. Right, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't case far on that dude. but you need to talk to Anthony about that. Calm down. Yes, I understand. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement, but you really need to talk to Anthony. He's the man with the papers. Listen, you know who I am, who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't worry. Give Anthony a call, okay? Hmm. scared me. I could use some assistance here. Okay, let's just go back then. Yeah, the last save was quite a long while ago. <laughs> the last manual save, I should say. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Did this dude somehow see here on... Um... Here, me dropping the cane earlier. Let's go. Anyway, he's now going in there. But yeah, I'll just initiate his dialogue to himself again. Or I can just talk to him. Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by bored. Okay. 
See if I can find a blonde member of staff named Ro who is probably going to be named Rosie. All right, there. Should be able to confirm or deny that bit of info. Casey, for God's sake, Emma. But why don't we get any kind of explanation? It's bloody. You're giving me a bit of anxiety, sir. Just continue your conversation. Why don't we get any kind of explanation? It's bloody rude. That's what it is. Rebecca Carlyle, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book. Which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me? No. Should be fine. Okay, something's definitely going to be in there. You can interact with that cage, apparently. And the bust and... Some paddles. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't been <laughs> quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my... Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Is that all? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. So, somewhat... So, it seems that he did actually go. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. 
But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Okay, that's interesting. Now where's the... Is this Zachary? Or an image of Zachary? Painting? Whatever. Or Montgomery. Who... Oh, that's the... One that... Uh, Emma... Emma's father, basically. Where? Is it just something up there? Cigar box? Be on like a different floor of that that thing then. Why waste away in front of the That's basically whose handwriting matches the suicide note. Yes, hi Cassie. It's oh, sorry, got it wrong. Sorry. Yes, hi Cassie. It's me again, Edward. I, I know I'm not supposed to leave you messages, and this is the last time. I promise. It's just uh, I don't know how to handle this whole situation. Just gonna throw in a save quickly. I don't think I can really. I've uh, got to go. Sorry, I'll, I'll stop calling you. I don't know how to handle this. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes. This dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He never admitted. I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Okay, Anything yeah. else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by mother's supposed death. We were. Okay, some people say he's more but engaged. He Other seemed more engaged more than usual. Suicidal, which is you should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff. All the company he had. If that's all, I... Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? <laughs> Zachary found yeah, Jesse's bed this that. morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And the mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. <laughs> I can't breathe. Excuse me. That's honestly kind of hilarious. <laughs> Mother will have a strong opinion on what I say about her. Okay, so... I believe that's most of this floor done. I'm not thinking about Emma all the time, but she just makes me so angry. What is it now? She turned up and demanded to be put 
saw in Madame Carlyle's bedroom. We're the new heads of the family after all. It is only fitting. Well, Gregory was stopped, which was a surprise. He normally accepts his wife's outrageous behaviour without batting an eye. But staying in his mother's bed so soon was just a bit steep, I suppose. And her son's family is just as bad. Look at Rosie. She has no respect. Well, might as well lock pick it. There has to be something interesting in here. A banana and a mansion guard outfit. Just gonna pick up a bunch of items, might as well. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Yeah, Never so any romance. Is, um... I deserve romance. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I, I spent the evening with Patrick. Okay, then Patrick we met after so. dinner, and I went home at Dying. one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like this. Okay, so. So not Edward, and also not Patrick, and not Gregory. So that's Rebecca, Emma, Patrick, and Burnsby. Well, Patrick's just Enter been... Enter the universe, like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. So... He's an idiot. Yep. He's been confirmed. It, that's what he is. Right, so that... That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Might as well just lock it my way in. And this is... Okay, he didn't write this suicide note. Fire poker. Dimension master key will be useful. Now let's just pick, get out the camera again. Painkillers. Lethal if you use it. Enough of them. These but not murder. the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Zachary's diary. This is big. Ooh. That counted in here? Nope, it'll probably office, yeah. What does it say? Ooh. Oh, okay. So. He was about to confess to the world. That he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. Seems like it is Alexa. And apparently, it? Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carla he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, Carla. you want to do some more detecting, 47? I'm not going to frame a, a, um... I'm not going to frame someone. Oh, 
Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. Let's fix this then. So I could just make. Ooh, I could make poison. So he didn't commit suicide. And so far, everyone has some. Um... This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled 47. Female. Okay, so that's the greenhouse, so it's what, Rebecca's room now? Rebecca's room, and that seems to be them all. Oh, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carla is next in line for a poisoning. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carla that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. Most definitely is more secrets to uncover. And another wrench. If only there's a crowbar. Okay, so... Back his room, possibly talk to uh, um, Adam Carlisle herself. Was... Yeah, what there is actually, um, so two viable suspects so far. Where is the butler, though? Zachary's room already investigated, and I believe this would be that Emma's room. That is the door there. to Rebecca's room. Hmm. What is going on? So not the suicide note handwriting. Uh, so he was going to publish. Ah uh, yes, uh, me and Alexa murdered all these people, like murdered our older brother all these years ago, and. That is obviously why he mentioned that. Another secret room. Hmm. Does that count? How does that interact with... Is there something in here then? Peephole into there. What do I say to Carlisle? I feel completely blindsided here. I have no idea what's going on. It's it's all gone. No, she's calm as ice. It's it's just not natural. Nobody's that calm. It's gonna end in murder, I'm telling you. I guess it's something in there. 
Oh. Well? Well? Well, what did you find? Ah. Uh. You spit away. should be here. some sort of cupboard does not look like it I'm just gonna have to drag this dude and hide him in here I'll just somehow break this. No, not the secure. This the secure. They were both security. Oh. Okay. Now you can just go in here. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. Oh, there was a thing in here. Okay, let's just go back in here. Here then. Oh wow, her laptop. 
How did I not notice this? I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. So it can be narrowed down. This is a restricted area and I can't let you through. Okay. You gotta move on. So it can be narrowed down to either Fernby or so it's either Fernby or Emma. I mean, could honestly be either of them. But yeah, we'll save regardless. Because I honestly don't know how much time I have. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Hi there. So I think... So what I think happened was... Emma did, like, did the actual murder. No, but... Oh yeah. Because Emma looked shocked when Hey, how you doing? Carla walked when Alexa just walked in. So what I think could have happened then So she killed um the dude and Basically, avenging her father's death. Yeah, keep it real. Then. Got shocked when walked in because, oh wait, not everyone's dead. But then he actually helped cover it up, this dude. This is Madame Carlyle's office. Please step inside. Oh, this way. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. <clears throat> the butler, Mr. Fernsby, killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. You were wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlyle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never 
leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The Constant? But that must mean you're... <sighs> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill me. If you were, you would have already. The enemy of my enemy, I suppose. Sure, you can sure. have it. You earned it. Oh, look, secret safe. The file you want is in the safe. How are you, sir? Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carla. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Right, time to go. No reason to stick around. This way. Now I basically just need to get to an exit. Wait, did this place literally only have one exit, which is basically the way I came in? Okay. Time to go. You're welcome for solving the murder. <laughs> if you need me to come back and solve another one, just call. <laughs> what murder, you might ask? Well, the murder of Alexi Karlov, obviously. Now it is time to leave. 47! They're everywhere! Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Let's go. Level 5 mastery, so a better lock pick. Can just pick up some from somewhere else. Well, there's a bunch of deliveries and a new starting location. As well as a new pistol. Thank you, Miss Burnwood. Now, it's my turn. 
Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other, and I meant it. I'll look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. That done. Yeah, next we are going to Berlin. Until then, I will see you all next time. Bye.